multiplying and dividing decimals by powers of 10. We've talked earlier this year about how our number system is a base 10 number system, and so every time we multiply or divide by a 10, there's a certain pattern that occurs in our number system. Same is true with decimals. Let's see how this works. My problem is 1 and 97 hundredths times 10 to the first power. 10 to the first power is just 10, so this problem is the same as 1 and 97 hundredths times 10. Every time we multiply by a power of 10, or by a 10, I should say, our numbers move to the left in the place value system. So here's my number in a chart. 1 and 97 hundredths. We are only multiplying by 110, so the digits are going to move one place to the left. So this 1 is going to move to the tens place. The 9 will move to the ones place. Decimals don't move, it's always between the 1 and tenths places. And so this 7 is going to move up to the tenths place. So the product, the answer to this multiplication problem, 1 and 97 hundredths times 10 to the first would be 19 and 7 tenths. Now if we start with our same original number, but this time multiply by 10 squared, that is the same as 1 and 97 hundredths times 10 times 10. So there are two tens this time, and every time we multiply by a ten, the digits move to the left for each ten. So back to my original number, one and ninety-seven hundredths. If I multiply by the first ten, it moves the one from the ones place to the tens place. And then if I multiply by the second ten, it's going to move that one even farther over to the hundreds place. The nine would come on over to this tens place, and the seven comes into the ones place. Now I could put my decimal and a zero here, but then my number would read 197 and zero tenths. I don't need that zero tenths, so I don't need the decimal either. My answer is just 197. So the pattern in our place value system of digits moving to the left every time we multiply by a 10 continues even when we have a decimal. When we divide by a power of 10 instead of going to the left, our digits are going to move to the right every time we divide by a 10. Starting with my same original number from before, 1 and 97 hundredths, when we are dividing, our digits are going to move to the right, and because I'm dividing by 10 to the first power, that is just 1 10, so that our digits will make just one move. So, this time I'm moving to the right. The answer is getting smaller. This 1 comes to the tenths place, 9 to the hundredths place, and the 7 comes to the thousandths place. Now I have to put my decimal in here. And you should never start an answer with just a decimal. If there is nothing in the whole number places, we should put a zero. And so the correct answer would be zero and 197 thousandths. Zero and 197 thousandths. All right? This time, same number, original number, one and 97 hundredths, but we're dividing by 10 squared or 10 to the second power, you can say it either way. So this really means divide by 10 times 10. And so because, again, there are two tens, these two right here, my digits have to move two place values. So in the original number, it was in the ones place, it would move to the tens place for dividing by the first 10. Dividing by another 10 is going to get me to the hundredths place, 9 to the thousandths, and the 7 to the ten thousandths place. Well, my decimal has to stay here, cannot have a blank place value in the tenths place, so I'm going to fill that one in with a zero and the ones place in with a zero. So this time, 1 and 97 hundredths divided by 10 squared 
is equivalent or equal to 0 and 197 ten thousandths. 0 and 197 ten thousandths. Every time we divide by a 10, our digits are moving to the right, a smaller place value. Let's try this without the chart. 2 and 43 hundredths times 10 to the first. Multiplying, my answer should be getting larger. The exponent is going to tell me how many times I'm multiplying by a 10. And so really it's telling me how many place values my digits need to move. So multiplying by 110 here. So this 2 is going to have to move over to the next largest place value, which would put it in the tens place. The four would come to the ones place. Always after the ones place is my decimal. And so now the three is not in the hundreds place anymore. It would have to move over. Each of these would move over one place value. And so this three is now in the tens place. So my product is 24 and 3 tenths. This time, 2 and 43 hundredths times 10 squared. The exponent again is telling me how many places it's going to have to move. So I would be multiplying by 2 10, so it's going to make 2 moves. So this 2 has to go from the 1's place to the 10's and then to the 100's. So this 2 needs to be in the 100's place. The 4, again, 2 moves each. It, if it moved once, it would get it to the 1's place. A second move would get it to the 10's place. And so this 3 is going to have to fill the 1's place. And I do not need to put a decimal or the 0 because 243 and 0 cents is the same as just 243. So I can leave this decimal off. All right, this one here. 2 and 43 hundredths times 10 to the 3rd power, or 10 cubed, you can say that either way, means that this is going to make 3 moves. Now if I'm looking back, because this is going to have to make three moves, that's getting a little difficult to think about. Well, when it made one move, the two went to the tens place. The second move, when I did ten squared, got that two into the hundreds place. And so this is one extra move, since it's ten to the third. So this two is going to go to the thousands place. The four would come to the hundreds place. The three would come to the tens place. And I do have a ones place right here that I would need. And so, yes, it has to be filled into a zero, or with a zero. So that gets me to 2,430. Because a ones place cannot be empty. You saw me add that decimal there and then take it away. In front of this decimal, I cannot have an empty ones place. So I do have to fill in the zero there. There's nothing after the decimal, so I don't need that. So my product would be 2,430. The opposite is going to be to divide. Dividing by 10 to the first power, so that's one move for each of these digits, and they're going to come to the right this time, making my number become smaller since I'm dividing. And so this 2 is no longer going to be in front of the decimal. Now it's going to be behind the decimal, in the tenths place. The four would have to move back to the hundredths and the three to the thousands place. Now my answer is missing something because I should never start with just a decimal. I do need to fill in the zero in the ones place. And so my uh, quotient this time is zero and two hundred forty three thousandths. All right. Divided by ten squared. Well that means that there's going to be two moves this was one move, and so now, instead of being in the tenths place, it's going to have to move to the hundredths, the thousandths, and the ten thousandths place. Each digit has moved one place behind. So, 2 and 43 hundredths divided by 10 squared is equal to 0 and 243 ten thousandths. All right, one more. Dividing by 10 to the third power, okay, this was one move because 10 to the first, two moves for 10 to the second. Now 10 to the third, this 2 is going to have to move back another place value, putting it here in the thousand.
thousandths place. So I've got to fill in some zeros till I'm to my thousandths place. There comes my two, then my four, then my three. Everything has moved back. Now, this is actually a decimal that we may not know how to read, but there is a place value pattern. So we've got tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. The next place value would be hundred thousandths. So to read this decimal correctly, it would be zero and 243 hundred thousandths. That one was a challenge. I would like for you to use the place value pattern not only to solve, but to explain your answer to these two problems in your math journal.